All right, so Paul, I, I guess Jupiter, Saturn, they're big enough. They can do some, cause some tidal friction to still keep some of these moons warm, which then changes the surface, so these are not old. But surely, if you're small enough, far away enough from the sun, you should just be a crater lump of rock like Mercury, right? That's right. So you'd expect big things like the Earth to be able to retain their heat and keep lava from the radioactive elements. And you expect small things that are near Jupiter or Saturn to get pulled apart by the tides. And that keeps them molten, so it gives you a liquid ocean under yep. the surface or maybe uh, lava on Io. But yes, you're absolutely right. If you take a small lump that's not near a planet, like you know, a small asteroid like Vesta, it should just have solidified a long time ago and be covered in craters. So everything on the outside of the solar system, in theory, past Neptune, should just be cratered lumps? Anything small that's not yeah. near a planet. So the asteroid belt, and indeed most asteroids do seem to look like this. And it should also apply to things further out, like yep. uh, Pluto and the other trans-Neptunian objects, like Eris and Quaor and so on. Now, for most of these, we don't know because we've never sent a space probe by them. But we have sent a space That's probe right. by Pluto, and it doesn't quite fit the theory. Yeah, look, it looks very not what people were expecting, right? This is not at all like a Mercury thing. This is kind of almost Marsy. There seems to be some flat plain areas. There are some craters, but it is not at all like Mercury or mo the Moon. Yes, I mean, there are, there are regions on Pluto, like this region, yeah. which are just covered in craters like you'd expect. But if you go here, I mean, there's sort of the Love Heart. That's right. It's got a formal name now. I think it's named after Clive Tombaugh, the yeah. pioneer of Pluto explorer. And, but it's got virtually no craters on it. Yeah, and it's a, it's a relatively smooth plane, much like actually we saw with the Mari on the moon. Yes, but it's far too cold for there to be any lava. Yeah. Now, it turns out that the smooth area here um, actually is a glacier of okay. nitrogen. So it's a nitrogen glacier. Nitrogen so it's, ice. So it's cold enough to freeze nitrogen gas into not a liquid but a solid and turn that into glaciers. And so instead of H2O glaciers, it's nitrogen. So Pluto is this bizarre, very cold analog of the Earth, if you like. On Earth, you get lava and yep. um, glaciers of water. On here, you get a glacier of nitrogen. So the nitrogen is not an air, it's ice. Okay. And they're actually icebergs of frozen water ice being carried along in the glacier. Okay, all right. This is a really cool picture, I thought. We have the Earth and some mountains on Pluto. And on Earth, you can see there's snow high up. The mountains are made of rock, yep. and there's snow, which is frozen water high up above the snow line. And it kind of looks like that on Pluto. But in fact, the mountains are water, because of the temperature of Pluto, yep. water is harder than rock. Okay. And this is actually methane ice forming on the, the peaks of it. So we have methane ice on ice, water ice rocks, whereas on Earth we have normal rock with water ice on top. Yes, and you actually get lakes uh, like this one, which seems to be a lake of frozen nitrogen. Okay. At some point was liquid or I don't know what it was, and it somehow condensed and formed this, this flat area. So, okay, but this still doesn't make any sense because what, this isn't hot enough. There's nothing to keep it warm. Yes, and there's, there seem to be volcanoes. Um, we call them cryovolcanoes, and they're okay. seen in a few other places. So, um, and these seem to be volcanoes where you're getting ices erupting from it, like methane ice or ammonia or something like this. Wait, wait, so, so instead of lava... Or nitrogen, or... instead of molten rock, which yeah. is what you get on Earth. It's having ice come out of it. So it's an incredible okay. cold temperature analogue of these things. Now here's perhaps one of the more interesting examples. Yep. We've got a crater with a crack coming out of it. Okay. And you see the funny sort of colour in this crack? Yep. And they have these um, spectrometers that can measure the spectra of these things that like we were talking about earlier. Yep. And what you can see down here is a, the spectral imaging of this. And uh, you can see that there's huge amounts of methane along this crack. It seems to be almost pure methane. Okay. So what they actually think is happening is there are at least pockets of some sort of brine, which mm. might be a, a hot, salty water, methane, ammonia mixture of some description. It could even be a whole ocean under the surface in Pluto. Um, there's some evidence that it could be that because it looks like some of the big places have been moved around. Okay. So it's sort of sliding around on this huge ocean. Or it could just be pockets of liquid That's underneath right. the surface. 
But it's still very puzzling because why is it hot enough <laughs> to produce it? I mean, there's no tide. So I mean, it's right. Yeah, there, there's no big planet. It's very far away from the sun. It's... It does have a big moon, Charon, but they're tidally locked. That's true. So they're not going to be having, causing much tides. And, and, to sc- and to scale, Pluto is actually slightly smaller than the Earth's moon, right? That's so it, right. It doesn't have enough mass or size to keep heat on the inside through nuclear reactions. So what's going on here? And what am I if we don't know? It's probably a little bit of heating from nuclear reactions. Okay. And that, because we're not trying to get molten lava, we're just trying to get molten uh, ice. So, <laughs> and it could be this, this brine could get molten at very low temperatures. Oh, okay. So it could be that it's because there's it's just enough heat that it wouldn't work on an inner planet where you need to produce molten rock, but to get ice out, maybe? Yes, and this flat area is the surface from frozen nitrogen. Again, it's not something that's going to happen. So you're getting the same sort of processes, but all happening at a much lower energy level and a much yeah. lower temperature because we're talking about frozen gases and nitrogen and so on happening. Another possibility is the heat's coming from actually a phase transition that maybe something is crystallizing inside okay. and that can liberate some heat. Okay. But basically, no one really knows. But it's clearly you can get these very strange processes even in the outer reaches of the solar system, they, they're these young meteorite-free areas because of these totally bizarre... Um, we've got other places on Pluto where you've got methane ridges yep. and um, huge mountains made of water ice and so on. So it's a very interesting place with a totally bizarre dynamic caused by very low temperature geology, if you like. Interesting.